So it seems like all the big phone manufacturers are busy spaffing out their own version of a foldable blower these days. And while Huawei is no stranger to the foldables market by any means, this is their first in a while, the Huawei P50 Pocket. It's proper compact, just like Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip, the Oppo Find N and such forth, but it's also proper expensive, starting at 1000 299 euros and if you want this premium edition version well that's going to set you back over a grand and a half so is the huawei p50 pocket actually worth this premium price tag well let's whip it on out the box take you on a full on tour of the hardware the software and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers so the first question is what do you actually get in the box besides the huawei p50 pocket well, it looks like you've got some sort of posh letter from the designer Iris Van Herpen. The natural phenomenon is translated into the artistic creation of parametric patterning, which is being integrated. Uh, I think you might get a protective case of some description with the final retail model, but for my review sample, that is completely empty. And then in here, a bit of power adapter and USB cable action. Exciting stuff. And the actual adapter is a bit of a beast, but it does max out at 40 watt supercharge. And that, my lovelies, is everything that you get in the box with the Huawei P50 Pocket. All right, so here is the Huawei P50 Pocket in all of its splendor. And you can grab this here, Global Edition, in two different designs, either a blingy white offering, otherwise this here, Special Premium Edition, which features organically flowing patterns in a stunning gold tone. Personally, I've got to say, it kind of reminds me of sea monkeys. Does anyone remember sea monkeys? They were like the world's crappest pet back in the 90s. They kind of looked like this, except they had two beady little eyes at the end. You've got a glass and metal finish here on the Huawei P50 Pocket, and it weighs 190 grams so it's definitely still got a solid heft to it so it doesn't feel like a toy or anything it's just over 15 millimeters thick when it's folded up like so so a bit chunky but you know like the z flip 3 and things like that it will slip into a pocket no worries whatsoever and obviously quite small handbags and the like it's a fairly stiff hinge mechanism so it's not the easiest to sort of flip open one-handed uh, as you can see there <laughs> I could just about do it but i don't exactly look steve mcqueen cool doing it and as you can see there, when I'm folding and unfolding the Huawei P50 Pocket, the hinge seems to keep the screen in place wherever you leave it. At first it was a little bit loose, but it seems to have uh, sort of sorted itself out now. And there is a clear crease in the display when the light catches it just so and when you run your finger over it as well. But when the screen is actually turned on, it's really not noticeable at all. You don't get any official IP rating or anything here with the Huawei P50 Pocket, unfortunately, unlike the P50 Pro. So you definitely don't want to go getting it too moist, although it should be fine if it just gets caught in a bit of drizzle or whatever. And I like some of the design touches as well that Huawei has implemented here, like keeping with the dual ring design, just like what you've got on the P50 Pro. Though here, of course, one of those rings isn't used for camera tech. It is used instead for that dinky external display. Definitely more on that in a bit. Now on the software side, what you've got here is Huawei's very own Emotion UI 12. It's not sat there on top of Android or anything because of the whole Huawei US spat. So as usual, yes, unfortunately that means no Google services, no Google Play Store for downloading apps, etc. But Huawei has you covered with the likes of the App Gallery. Certainly nowhere near as well stocked as the Google Play Store, unfortunately, although it's getting better with every passing month. And if there are any apps that you can't find on the App Gallery, uh, the likes of WhatsApp, for instance, all you need to do is type it into the Petal search. And this will help you to find the APK file for installing that app on the Huawei P50 Pocket, uh, either on the likes of APK Pure, otherwise direct through the actual app's website. So you can get iPlayer, Prime Video, Audible, all of that good stuff. And I've also installed the likes of Facebook, Messenger and WhatsApp on here. However, fans of Google's own apps, likes of Gmail and YouTube and everything, will have to access these via the Quick App Service instead, which essentially just loads these services in a browser window. It's a little bit messy, not quite as good as the actual dedicated apps. And also some Google apps like Google Podcasts, I simply could not get working. The actual UI is very, very similar in layout and everything to the likes of Google's Android, of course. So flick this way, you've got the today window. This basically serves up a whole bunch of widgets and then you've got your usual news feed down here if you keep on flicking. You've got an apps tray for conveniently storing away all of your apps. You don't have to have them scattered all over your desktops. You've got your notifications window, which you can drag down like so. And then you've also got the control center as well, which you can drag down from the right hand side. 
This is quite similar to the control center on iOS and also in Xiaomi's own MIUI launcher, just seven up lots of quick access shortcuts and the like. Now if you jump on into the settings menu, you've got lots of customization you can do in here. So for instance, dive into home exterior screen and wallpaper, and there's lots you can play around with in here. Uh, changing up the icons, the wallpaper, fiddling around with the always on display, I love what we always on display options. There's some really, really uh, slick designs and everything in there, highly customizable as well. Of course, some of them are super, super cheesy, but at least you can actually edit them, make it something a bit more appropriate. And yes, you can fully customize that exterior screen as well, get it set up exactly how you want. So there are a variety of themes that you can choose from for that screen. These range from the sort of artistic to fit the premium edition to the slightly bonkers, like this here UFO effort. You've also got a variety of uh, animated characters, including an alpaca. Why wouldn't you choose that? He certainly looks like a, a jolly wee fella. Oh yes, you can get some uh, some beaver action on there too. Personally, I prefer just setting my own wallpaper, to be honest, and you can set a separate exterior screen wallpaper to the main wallpaper, so you can set this up however you like, using pictures that you've downloaded, pictures that you've taken on the camera, whatever. So I thought I'd go for a bit of a neon Genesis theme here on the Huawei P50 Pocket. And when the Huawei P50 Pocket is all folded up, that external display is pretty handy just for quickly checking your notifications. You can just drag down like so, you can see the time and the date, of course. And you've got access to a small selection of widgets as well, including checking on the weather report, you can see what your schedule is all about. You can fast access that camera as well, which we'll touch on in a bit. And you've got fast access to your media controls as well via the likes of Deezer or Huawei Music. You can customize the widgets that pop up on that external display in the exterior screen uh, settings. As you can see, only a very small selection available right now, but hopefully that will improve over time. And the Huawei P50 Pocket sports some exclusive and funky new features as well, including smart sunscreen detection, which would be helpful for a pasty skin northerner like myself who singes in mere seconds out in the sun. But apparently this is only available in select markets right now and not here, which is a bugger. Now, of course, flick open the Huawei P50 Pocket in that really excellent, cool way that I always do. And you will unveil inside a mighty 6.9 inch OLED display. And this is a cinematic 21 by 9 panel, so absolutely perfect for kicking back with a movie, playing games and the like. You've got a 2700 by 1228 pixel resolution, similar to the P50 Pro, so those visuals are nice and crisp, boy howdy. Fantastic viewing angles on this thing as well, a nice poppy, punchy in your face colours as well, although you can choose between more standard and those more vivid hues to sort of suit your own tastes as it were. On the peak brightness levels as well, no issues with visibility when you do have to venture outdoors and it's actually sunny. You've got reasonably skinny bezels surrounding that OLED screen and only a dinky little pinhole cutout camera thing up top intruding on the action when you do go full screen. It's not quite as bad as the likes of the notch for instance on the Motorola Razr. Because you've got all the usual display settings that you can play around with, the likes of the eye comfort mode, you can stick it on dark mode as well if you like. And then if we scroll down a wee bit here, you've got the screen refresh rate setting. As you can see, this is set to dynamic by default here on the Huawei P50 Pocket. So that can skill the refresh rate between 60 hertz and 120 hertz to either conserve power or give you a nice silky smooth experience when you're playing with supported apps. Because you can just bung it on 120 hertz full time if you like. And there's even a smart resolution feature as well, which can lower the res uh, just to again conserve battery power when you're not in need of those super crisp visuals. As for the audio, well, you've got a stereo speaker set up here on the Huawei P50 Pocket, but is it actually any good? Let's boost up the volume and see. Go out and see people we know in real life and drink obscene amounts of alcohol with them in pubs like we used to. Well, first up, even though it is a stereo arrangement, you'll notice that if you do accidentally muffle this bottom speaker here, suddenly the sound gets a lot more tinny. It's not evenly distributed between the two speakers, reasonably loud on top volume, but it's not exactly gonna, you know, do the job if you're in a super noisy environment or anything. So the audio is all right, but I would say definitely you wanna be getting connected to some headphones if you wanna really enjoy a bit of video or obviously some music. But of course, like the Huawei P50 Pro and most of the premium phones these days, no headphone jack action at all to speak of. So you're gonna need to either dongle it up or get some Bluetooth on the go. So let's talk security. And you've got an edge mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Huawei P50 Pocket, just built into that power button there. And so far, touch wood, that seems super, super responsive. 
no issues whatsoever with it uh, figuring out that I am me. And that also works as well if the phone is all folded up and hibernating. Just again, tap your digits to the sensor, you'll wake up that external display and then you'll be able to check your notifications and play with all the widgets. Otherwise, alternatively, the Huawei P50 Pocket also supports face recognition using that camera tech and this, yes, again works with the external display so you can unlock it and get access to all your widgets. And the face recognition also works with the internal camera like so. On the storage tip, you've got a choice of 256 or 512 gigs of internal space. So as you can see there, I've got the 512 gig model. It's gonna take me a bit of a while to fill that one up. And you can even boost that if you want as well by slotting in one of Huawei's very own proprietary NM cards. Performance comes courtesy of the Snapdragon 888 chipset, although it is the 4G variant of it, not the fully 5G-ified version. So if you do want a bit of 5G, you're gonna have to look elsewhere, unfortunately. And that is backed here on the Huawei P50 Pocket by the eight or 12 gigs of memory. And certainly the everyday experience is nice and smooth and games like Asphalt, of course, run perfectly super super smooth frame rates no dips or drops whatsoever and thankfully even with a fair bit of game and i did not notice the huawei p50 pocket starting to heat up and the battery life seems pretty decent here on the huawei p50 pocket as well sometimes it can be the death knell of foldables like the motorola razor absolutely terrible it's usually dead by sort of late afternoon at the very latest but here on the huawei p50 pocket it's got 4000 milliamp capacity battery I used the phone for most of yesterday, gaming on it, streaming some uh, some video, shooting lots of photos of my cats, all the usual bollocks, and it happily survived the day, no worries. And when the battery is dead, you've got 40 watt wires charging support, no wireless charging support, unfortunately, here on the P50 Pocket. Now, on the outside of the P50 Pocket, you've got a triple lens camera setup, 40 megapixel true chroma sensor, 32 megapixel ultra spectrum lens, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And it's your standard Huawei camera app as well once you load it up. Although if you want to, you can just slightly bend the display. And as you can see, this brings all of the main camera modes and features down to the bottom half. So it's much easier to use one handed. And you can also, if you so wish, prop up the Huawei P50 Pocket so you can uh, get it to take a photo or a video like so. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no way of sending a preview of whatever you're shooting to that little dinky external display. So your subject can't, you know, do their hair quickly, strike the right pose all of that unless that's a feature that i just i just simply cannot find buried away in uh, in here because there are a lot of different settings and features however if the one way p50 pocket is all folded up you can just flick to that camera widget and then this does give you a preview on that external display so you can merrily snap away using that instead of the internal selfie cam oh jesus serious bags under the eyes today definitely need more sleep and the photo quality here on the Huawei P50 Pocket, while not quite as strong as the P50 Pro, still very strong indeed. Even in low light environments, you'll tend to get plenty of detail packed in there and reasonably natural looking colours too. Just make sure that if you are trying to shoot a living, breathing subject in low light, that they bloody well keep still. Otherwise, all of your photos will look like a blurry mess. Naturally, you've got all the usual bonus camera modes, including the portrait effort, which uh, gives you a beauty option, and you can choose from a variety of portrait effects. You've also got a night mode to help out with those low light shots. Again, only really useful when you're dealing with a static subject. And this does make a real difference, really helping to brighten up your shot and producing those more natural looking colors again. You also have a pro mode on here, which gives you full manual control over the ISO level, white balance, shutter speed, all that good stuff. And you can shoot in raw format if you like. And then as always, loads of bonus camera bollocks stuffed away in the more section as well, including the fluorescence mode, which as you can see there, is supposed to capture really vivid, trippy images in dark conditions. Although I gave this a go and I gotta say, I just could not get it to work at all. It's probably just me being rubbish as usual. Don't forget to tell me how rubbish I am down in the comments. And then for your home movie shenanigans, you can shoot a video at up to 4K resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second. And again, solid results as long as you're not trying to shoot in low light environments, nice crisp detail, strong audio pickup and good image stabilization. And then yeah, inside the Huawei P50 Pocket, you do have that 10 megapixel selfie cam up top as well, and that little pinhole housing. Uh, but as I say, it's only really necessary for if you're doing like Skyping or something where you need the P50 Pocket to be unfolded. Otherwise, you can just use that external cam just as easily to shoot your selfies. And so that in a nutshell is the Huawei P50 Pocket Premium Edition, a very expensive but very funky foldable blower, which of course does lack the Google services, but boasts 
plenty of really slick Emotion UI features stashed in there. So be great to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Check out my Huawei P50 Pro full unboxing and tour, which is live right now. And have yourselves a bloody fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.